Now we have Charlie Caldwell from Global Investments, who's going to share 15 minutes with us on living smart with AI. So Charlie, good to see you again. And uh, thank you uh, for joining us for this AI summit. Great to meet all you today. Um, I want to focus on a lot, a little bit on what Brian was into, and and also with Carol. Um, Carol specifically, you know, it showed a model showing the importance of your own data. The challenge you can have today with AI is what if you don't have the data you need to build some of the capabilities you want to build, so you can really adopt AI in a way where it's you can hit the hit the road running right away. And that's really what I want to focus on today is that it's so important. There's so much information. There's so many applications. Every company's different. Every person's different. The trick is to know where to, to focus. And that this is something that you know I've learned over many, many years. I've you know gotten in the information business some 40 years ago, but Essentially, I've been building models. Um, a lot of this came out of uh, pioneering the digital asset management market with all the big companies. Um, and we started, you know, in fact, we used to, it was originally called media asset management. And I, we, and I, I, when I started looking at the data and what everybody was doing, this is back in the late 90s, you know, you start seeing like, wait a minute, this is, it, it, these are digital files. These are every kind of file you can imagine. So if you're in a Disney, you're looking at video. If you're in an audio company, you're looking at audio. If you're looking at, uh, you know, writing code, you're writing a, or magazines or whatever, you're writing, you're authoring. But there's all kinds of different ways to look at what individual knowledge workers are doing every day. And that's what really dawned on us back. We were collecting data from millions and millions of people all over the world. And then we started, you know, with all this data, we started building these models. And what came out of it was it was really important to know who you are as a person and what you do all day. It's really, really critical if you have some way to kind of have a baseline or some kind of a benchmark to know what that is. So if you look here in this image, work groups are essentially, this is really what each type of knowledge worker does on a day-to-day -day basis. We've we've broken this down into hundreds and hundreds of, of segments. But if you look at all the core categories, authoring, administrative kind of work, meetings, communications, research and learning, you know, creative development, which is what Brian was kind of highlighting. Then you have the environments today, which you know come in a COVID, you know, post-pandemic world. We are, we're working at home, we're working in the office, we're working at Starbucks. The point is where you work can have a huge impact on your, your productivity. So that's a really big issue today with, with, uh, with management, trying to figure out how do you manage, how do you balance out where people live and work at, you know, across a huge enterprise. And then you've got down uh, this other model here, the the workforce itself, the well being, that you know, how happy, how how healthy are my people? I mean, you want a very strong, robust workforce to to basically operate on one hundred percent every day. So that's a big, big issue today, and it gets into everything from plans and benefits. And I'm going to show you a uh, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about at the end of my presentation on this, and then you've got the IT capabilities. So. The, the main thing here is what I refer to as corporate DNA. We're going to get into that in detail, but that work groups area, this is really important because if you have the data you need to actually measure a corporation, I mean, talking, you know, the largest companies in the world down to startups, but the larger you are, the more complex you are, the more diverse you are. In, in locations around the world, the, the larger number of knowledge workers you have, the more AI is going to get going to impact you. So when we drill down here, as I said, it's really important to know who, what, who are, what's every individual doing in my in, in each company. 
And what, you know, who are they? What do they do? What do they want? What do they need? Well, you need to answer that question because if you start looking at applying all the different applications, you're going to get lost. I mean, there's so many places to go. What you want to do is focus in on the areas where you can get the greatest impact up front. So you get that impact and you make those cost savings and then that drives you. Take those cost savings and drive it into the next and the next. So what you need is to be able to develop strategy. You need to develop roadmaps and action plans that are, are grounded based on the information of your business, the DNA, the people and what those people are doing on a day to day basis. So when you start to break things down, what you could see, this model here is about all the little data components that are in your business. The challenge today is how you normalize that. How do you bring all that information together into the AI tools so you can use them? Well, again, your problem is if you don't know where to start, because you know if it, 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 it costs a lot of money, it takes a lot of time, a lot of resources to basically build the data, the foundational baseline data that you need in order to look at your productivity. And this is where, if you talk to business executives around the world, this is where everybody's trying to, you know, really kind of starting to realize is that AI is transformative. It, it can really help you take your business from where it is today into the future. Well, that's partly the issue that everybody's faced with now. I mean, how do you take a, you know, a global company? How do you localize your products all over the world and streamline, streamline that process and bring products to market you know, in a shorter amount of time? Things like communications and meetings, texting. You know, texting, if you think about what you do every day, texting, it's really kind of stupid. In a lot of ways, I mean, you, you sometimes you just need to get on the phone and talk to somebody face to face to to share an idea, to share something quickly. There's a place and a time to text, but at the same time, you know, device addictions become a huge problem. So things like this is where this activity base. Once you, if you have the data, it says this is what we're doing now, and but this is what we could be doing. That's the key is to know where to apply <laughs> AI in a way where you can really get the impact and the ROI you need to basically fuel for future development. So I want to point out things like best practices, like daily team scrum meetings, where you get everybody, you know, in small teams, they come together in a room, virtual, wherever you're on the screen, you get to share and see what everybody's doing for that day. Those type of things could be extremely important for keeping a team together and focused and working and, and communicating. Things like engineering lunches. We actually had one today. Very fascinating. It's a great way to get people in the office. People that can't attend can be outside and, and dial in, but they're really effective. And then things like Heat maps, you know, productivity reviews, actually having your data if you're coding or you're you're developing products, you can look and see how you're progressing by putting your data in and looking at it visually on the screen. So these are kinds of things that I think are really, really important because we're living in a world now where there's so much information, there's so many tools, so many different things that everybody's overwhelmed. And it, it's really important it's gonna get worse with AI. So it's really important to be able to focus and know where you're gonna get the ROI that you need to have to make the impact you need to have in the company. So <clears throat> I'm gonna give you an example here. Um, I think um, Brian was talking about Oreo. So here's a great example, Mondelez, if you're familiar with um, Nabisco. I mean, these guys make cookies and crackers and they're huge. They're in 45, Look, manufacturing locations all over the world. When we took and did a DNA model on Mondelez, and then we started looking at, okay, if we were to attack, you know, these areas of inefficiency, what kind of impact could we have? So imagine having the data up front 
without even walking in the door and having this kind of information for a management team to really look at what you're doing now versus what you could be doing in the future. We used to build ROI calculators for all kinds of solution providers. We ha Having these models, we could take an application, plug it in and see what kind of impact it would have on the productivity of a company and see what it did to the bottom line. This is the power of AI. This is the power for what corporations are gonna be able to do. So these are real numbers. I mean, Mondelez, you're talking about the potential of one year of getting 1.1 billion in savings. It's huge. Now, if you wanna narrow that down, you start looking at, here's the data. This is all the people. So we modeled, this is a worldwide view of the company. And you can see office, off-site meetings, on-site meetings, phone correspondence, email correspondence, editing, you know, text-based uh, authoring. Well, if you're writing code, you're authoring. If you're texting, you're authoring. If you're writing a paper, you're authoring. This is what people do, but there, it varies by every kind of different knowledge worker. So what we do is we take and build the data from the company. It's very specific to the operations of a corporation. We have these models we've been developing for 20, 30 years. We extract from those and we build the DNA model for the corporation. Once you have this model, which is hundreds and hundreds of thousands of cells of data, once you have this model and you plug it in and you tie it into the rest of the information in your company, the applications that you can put together are mind boggling but the key thing here is you'll know where to focus. You'll know where you're gonna get the biggest bang for your dollar. So important today when there's such limited you know, resources to go around and so much work to get done. So I wanna give you a little history here. This is not something you can just do overnight. That's why we, we've been waiting for AI for 20 years. We saw this, we saw these solutions. We saw, so we started building that we had the data. <clears throat> it was really important for us to be able to pull this data together, build the models. And that's essentially what we did. It's, it, you don't need like, you know, it's a huge numbers of people doing this, you know, if you're doing it for long periods of time. The advantage is that when we started so long ago, that we, we can actually, we've been back testing and updating these models for 30 years. So now what we're looking to do is we've got these, we have the models, we have the data, the DNA models for any corporation. What we're looking for is to work with partners that want to either bring their solutions in and they need to do ROI on them, or you know the corporate corporations and the, and the consultants that want to go in and help these corporations build it. We supply that source baseline data model, the DNA model for that company, which then in turn can be plugged in and then all these new applications and systems can be built off of it. It's to, it, it's to augment what people are doing today. But again, not having that information, you don't necessarily know where to focus and you don't want to know what kind of impact if you go into one project, whether it's gonna fail or whether it's gonna succeed. But what's it going to do to your bottom line? What's it going to do to your cost structure? That's really important to know up front. So if you want to, I mean, we, these are the kinds of people we've been collecting data from all these companies all over the world. I mean, Microsoft, I mean, we were working, helped design Bill Gates's Corpus. You can see them on the list here. I mean, I was brought in to architect that system to manage the more assets than you can imagine. But every one of these cases, every company's different. They're all made up of unique types of knowledge workers that are doing different things every day. Well, if you have, we have the model so we can look at a company from the outside looking in, we can build that model because we're extracting from world models on the economy of the world, the countries of the world, every product and industry and market in the world, we extract from those and build the models from that. So when you get into the details and you start looking at, okay, where to focus and so forth, 
what you're able to do is you can narrow in on any one thing. So you can look at a specific process that you're doing now. There's all kinds of companies. Maven comes up to mind in Europe. You know, they that's what they're doing with Accenture. They're taking and they look at a current process and they figure out how to do it better. Well, but what they can't do is look at it on the whole of the whole corporation. And so that's the point is like, what if you're focused on doing the wrong project first? What you want to do is you want to dive into the ones where you know you're going to make the impact. You're going to get the cost savings. So you have to have that baseline. Once you have the baseline, you can determine what's your optimum situation. And then you can see what the, the, the differential between <clears throat> the optimum and your baseline gives you your, your potential. And then what can you capture of that potential? And that's really what you're trying to do is you want to basically have people go into meetings and be more effective and be, you know, get things done in less time, have less meetings, but have effective meetings, spend less time emailing and corresponding, use things, all these new AI tools to author in, in, in half the time. If you write code, what you can do with chat GPT and, and Copilot is amazing. You, you know, it's clipping that code, sticking it in and say, what's wrong with it? And the feedback you get, it can drastically help up, help you speed up your development time. I know. I mean, I do this every day. So to give you an idea of what DNA looks like, here's a map. But it's 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 logic. So it's data, but it's context. You have to tie the two together. You have to be able to look at how everything fits together. That's the value of having a DNA map and have, having seeing how everything interconnects in your company in real time. So if you have a predictive model, you can have this historic information that you, you can see where you've been in the past. You can look at where you are today, but then you can also look at where you could be in the future. Imagine being able to have that kind of capability across a, a, a GE across a, a Boeing, across, you know, any large corporation, it's game changing. And we know this because we've worked with all these companies over the years, but it's just finally now we're at the point where the technology is to the stage now where you can now take this model, pull it in and tie it in with the other data and the other models in your business. And what we do is basically because we have these geo-econometric data models that we've been building for so many years, we can constantly, we're, we're, we're back testing. We can constantly go back and, and back test. And that's what you're doing with IT from applications and systems and devices. You can extract data out the log files out of those systems and back test it against the data you have in your, your DNA model. And you can continually update it. But you can actually see What's going on? So you're not only getting a map of like, this is what we can do. You can actually track what you are doing. And that's huge. So if I wanted to focus, here's another model. You know, this is on meetings. Meetings happen to be one of the most wasteful areas of every company. It just, people know this. But think of the logic. Look at the... What goes into creating a meeting? It's much more than Zoom and, and calendars and, and schedules and so forth. It's what, you know, what, what's the purpose? What do, you, what do you want to come out of it? What you need to do is each one of the activity areas, we have, we've defined them down to eight activity areas. Meetings with one, but <clears throat> that activity, and then we drill down and we go down to micro levels of detail in each one of them. So that's the thing is we build from the bottom up. We're just showing the top levels. The bottom up gives you the detail in micro detail that you can then build up. And that's how you can get really specific about any one area. And so what you need is the consulting firms. This is where you have a huge opportunity. You have practice leaders in each one of the areas. And that's what you do is you put the practice leaders in place and they so they go around and they make sure that meetings are done more effectively around the, 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 around the company. But you can track it. 
That's the thing is if you have the DNA model, you can say, well, this is what we're doing now. How are we performing? Let's do, let's implement these changes. Let's see what the, comes out on the backside. That's what you can do with the DNA model. So here's an example. Here, Talon, you know, based in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, this company is amazing. I mean, I, I just can't even get into, they've taken the entire U.S., every hospital, Every doctor, every every nurse, every procedure, every claim, all the insurance companies, and it basically ingested not billions, but trillions of raw data elements in building the normalization process is mind-boggling. This is AI in, in, in its work and basically building it down and now offering out. Can you imagine you're you know, you're in you know Exeter, New Hampshire, and you want to go and get a colonoscopy. You can go and look up now. What's the cost at Wentworth Douglas you know, Hospital? What did it cost in Exeter? What did it cost in Portsmouth? And you can actually see the cost. Well, guess what that's going to do? It's going to basically start to empower the individual again on their own health care. Back to what I was talking about in the very beginning. Happy and healthy employees are much more productive. They create more value. This company alone is going to start to transform healthcare on a huge scale. And I mean, they've been around for about eight years. They're just getting going. But I just wanted to give you an idea of the, the kinds of things that you can do with the, the, you know, really when you know how to apply AI and you know where to focus it, this is one area that's, that's huge. So one thing I'd recommend, look, at I, I've been doing this stuff for a long time. I would highly recommend getting my book. It's on Amazon, Living Smart with Heart. It's it's a it's a very it's a baseline book. It should be required reading for anybody in college just to get the baseline down of knowing what you need to do to become more effective in your day-to-day -day activities. And with that, you can find it on uh, on Amazon. Here's my, you know, content contact information. I'm on LinkedIn. You can reach out anytime to Gerald, and I'd be glad to reach out. But we're looking, this is this is such a huge market. We're looking for partners. We're looking for people. We've got, you, you do not want to try to rebuild what we've already built. It's almost impossible, but you can certainly take it and leverage it. And we're gladly, we'd work with all kinds of companies and just contact us and we'll see what we can do together.